Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. It's our special end of the summer labor of love edition of HB Live. We're here in San Diego where the summer never ends, which is fantastic. Um, and we've got a very special uh, event lined up for you tonight. We've got two really, really creative hair cutters that are really making a mark for themselves by pushing work out there that's unique and incredible. We're gonna start off with James Mould who's here in Hyde Edwards Salon in San Diego, but he's uh, from London, but came over here a little while ago. Let's get right into this haircut, because I know he's got something extraordinary planned for you. And of course, we want to hear as many questions as we possibly can. Take it away, James. Hey, hi guys, my name's James Mould. I'm the Education Director here at Hyde Edwards Salon and Spa. Um, when I'm not behind the chair or working with the staff, normally what I'm doing is working very closely with Ben, providing education with salons. Right, just trying to find a good angle here. Bear with me one moment. Yeah. So in the interest of time, me and Ben, because there's two of us, what we wanted to kind of do is really focus on one zone and really talk about what we're doing. So I decided to do a graduated shape and uh, Ben will talk about his shape when he comes on in a minute. But we're talking about what we'd like to share, what our main talking points would be. For me, what I wanted to talk about was sectioning. Sorry, still Sorry, trying to I find just, my right angle. I just elbowed everyone. No, 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 no. This might be it. Okay. You there? Yep, I'm okay. good. So, when it comes to sectioning, a lot of the questions that me and Ben get asked is, why are you using the sections that you are using? And how do you decide on what section you are using? So, for a classic graduated shape that we're starting with in the back, I'll ask someone why you're using that sectioning pattern and they'll say that's, that's a sectioning pattern that someone's shown me and they don't understand the reasons why. So if you're starting with, for example, a vertical section, your cutting line is going to give you more control over your vertical shape. Mm -hmm. What's going to control your horizontal shape is your over direction and your elevation. So I want to create a shape today that's kind of graduated but quite heavy so I'm gonna pivot very quickly to horizontal and use my elevation to to build weight quite quickly I'm gonna dry the back of Ali's hair quite textured and messy so it's not gonna be smooth it's gonna kind of have some movement so I want a heavy shape that kind of like kind of moves around and like enhances that curl so already my sections are closer to the horizontal now so really it's a study in, in building weight by how you vary the section angle. Uh huh. So you're kind of starting off, you sit closer to the vertical to lay the angle in, and then by pivoting you kind of build and collect the weight. Exactly. And that's based off of kind of a classic graduated bob concept? Yeah. yeah. So if I want more control over my horizontal shape, I'll tend to use horizontal sections. My cutting line's creating that shape. Elevation is creating this. If I want more control over my vertical shape, my cutting line will create this, but over direction will play a part in this. How long do you think it takes someone to understand that kind of concept in hair cutting? Um, this seems like a very kind of developed kind of concept. How long do you think someone who's working this way, does it take a few years, a few months, does it take a lifetime? What are your thoughts? I mean, from my experience, I've been very lucky to be surrounded by who I believe to be some of the strongest educators in the world and they'll all tell me different things so you know there'll be certain things that I'll pick up from certain people that I'm like and it'll just click it'll tick a box and I'm like wow okay cool that makes sense um, so I think the answer to that question is there's no time limit because you're always going to learn something new from something someone different yeah I, I, you know? I agree it's my 25th year as I always like to say because I'm proud of it and I'm if I wasn't learning new things every day, I don't think I'd keep doing it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like someone will tell you something and you'll be like, I never thought of that. Yeah. And it's so simple. Yeah, that exact like little spin on it. And you'll put it into your, like, your skill set and all of a sudden it's one more thing that you've got. So, I guess, yeah. Just... Joe Gilbert, who I know is a, is a buddy of yours, says hello. Joe. It's giving you a shout out. Hey, Hi, Joe, Joe Gilbert. We just spent some time with Joe in San Jose last weekend. Awesome. 
So for those that are, that are just joining us, because you know a lot of people start joining as it builds up, can you review um, what, what you're doing and where you started? Yeah, so in the interest of time, um, I pre-cut pre some of my haircut. Uh, I split my haircut into five zones. Zone number one being the fringe, which, oh, chair's locked. In the front, just a classic section from the center part into the highest point of the recession area. And I just combed it down and I cut a line, making sure that I didn't use too much tension. I didn't use any elevation, no over direction. Zones two and three over here were just a pure line to begin with. And then I wanted to remove some weight internally. So I picked the hair up and dropped out all my outline using vertical sections and just cut a concave cutting line. So externally it was longer, internally it was shorter. So the technique that you're using is, is graduation? The, the technique I'm using right now is graduation. Um, Can you give a little explanation? Because I, I think, you know, that's one of the things that, unfortunately, if you haven't had great training, it might not be clear as to the difference between graduation and layering. Can you yeah. give us in your own words? So graduation is a technique used to build weight. Your external shape is going to be shorter and it's going to build weight so internally it's longer. Layering is pretty much the opposite. It's a technique used to remove weight, internally shorter and externally longer. Oh, stereo. <laughs> well, we've got lots of people tuning in. Angelo Leonardo Alessi says hello. Hi. And uh, Raymond Ozaki says hello. Lots of people like to tune in and say hello. We're in San Diego. For those of you that are just joining us, we're at the Hyde Edwards Salon. Beautiful salon here in the heart of uh, Little Italy, San Diego. We've got James, uh, James Mold cutting right now. He's working on some beautiful graduation. So tell us uh, what's happening now, James. So I'm just coming towards the end of my first side of my graduation. Coming towards the top. What I'm being super mindful is of is losing some words I'm being super mindful of my tension I don't want to use too much tension I'm also being mindful of my elevation these are my two main focal points right now how did you determine that you don't want to use too much tension what's what's the key reason so right at the start the consultation stage kind of dictated the amount of tension that I was going to use when I was looking at the texture the density Can you just see the section you're taking real quick so it has something to do with her actual texture, how, how yeah. straight it so is? Yeah, so I made or... an analysis based on her as an individual, using her texture, her density, growth patterns, my choice of technique, things that I'm looking for that I like, things that I want to keep, things that I don't want to keep, understanding how the hair is going to react. I think, you know, back to the discussion we have before, how long does it take to understand certain things? You know, even when you understand Sorry. all the theory, understanding hair takes a lifetime. Oh, yeah. You know, there's still sometimes I get a head of hair and I'm like, I never expected that to happen. Even though I thought I knew what was going to happen, it's not exactly the way that I expected it. And sometimes the way that you react to the unexpected is, is where the real interesting things happen. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think from my personal experience, um, a lot of people, when they start, they're scared to make mistakes. You know, when you first pick up hair, you're always going to leave it a little bit longer or choose a technique that you're comfortable with. I think that's but, why sometimes people get so repetitive because they're yeah. afraid. So they do the same technique that they rely on and they get a little success and eventually they do it on everyone and then they get bored. But, but I think, uh, you guys push the envelope, which I think is fantastic. But I think that's what helps us learn the most, you know, like making the mistakes, being like, uh oh, that didn't work. Hey, Caitlin. Caitlin Butler joins. We've got someone from Serbia, Zaklina. Cool. Great to have uh, someone from that part of the world. Lots of great hair cutters in Serbia and Croatia. All right, so we're starting the second side. James, tell us what's happening. So, exactly the same sectioning pattern. What I'm doing right now is I'm being super mindful with my section size. I'm counting my sections using a number system to help me with my elevation. So. I know when I started on this side, I counted one, two, three, four, five until I was horizontal. So on this side, I want to count one, two, three, four, five until I'm horizontal. That's going to help me with my balance and also make sure that my elevation is consistent. So very mindful of balance. And if you're going to kind of section it off the same on both sides, you need the same amount of sections. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like using a number system to 
to help work was a big learning curve for me, you know. It can really help to create a rhythm in your work too. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're, sure. you're looking for symmetry and symmetry creates mm -hmm. rhythm and tempo. Even the amount of hair that you cut, you've got quite long fingers, but obviously you don't want to just bash off a ton of hair. Yeah. I guess another thing I'm being mindful right now of is I know I'm moving the chair around. If I was in the salon, what I'd be doing is potentially using parts of the room. So on this side, I knew my body position was here in relation to the head. So I knew my knuckles were pointing to, for example, this area on the chair. Kind of like a landmark. Exactly. Or an anchor for your graduation. And like I said, even though I'm moving the chair around, when I get to this side, I'm in the same position in relation to the head, but my fingertips are now pointing to the exact same point here and here. So with the number system, with the, point, the parts in the room, the section size, the section angle, they're all helping me with my balance. So Rebecca Chavez has a question. She's asking, will it create a lifted cut in the back? And I think what she's referring to is graduation. Yes. Yes, Rebecca, because of the elevation and the way that the hair is being, for lack of a better word, stacked, or what we call graduated, uh -huh. that will produce a contoured or graduated profile, or what we call lifted. It's based off a very, very fundamental and important technique. Yeah. So the more weight I want to remove internally, will dictate how high or low I lift it. So if I want to create a flatter shape, I'm going to lift it quicker and it's going to remove more weight internally, which is going to be a flatter graduated shape. If I want a heavier shape, what I'm going to tend to do is pull down, which is what I'm trying to achieve today. So I'm combing the hair from above quite a lot. So you can really take exactly the same sections same body position, same hand position, but just by varying your elevation or your over direction, change the whole outcome. Oh yeah, completely, two completely different shapes. Awesome. So now I've noticed that you're using a different hand position on this second side, and I think sometimes hairdressers struggle with that idea. Yeah. Uh, can you give us a little insight as to why you're holding it slightly different? Yeah, I mean, when I was thinking about this haircut earlier, I was going to start on the right side. My left side's my easier side, and I thought I'd start on my, my harder side. Right. But I'll just make it clear. There we go. Great, so we're back. We had a little bit of a connection issue, but we're back. And James is working up the back of his graduation here, and he's going to catch up on what he's doing. So what was the question? Just remind me. Uh, just talking about hand positions. You know, I think, yeah, that's right. unfortunately, so many people cut everything vertically that yeah. they don't understand the concept of kind of rotating the hand from side to side. Mm -hmm. And we see that a lot over the years of teaching graduation. So I just want to know what your insight was with, with choosing hand positions. So I just started talking about having an easier side and a harder side. And the reason the left side's my easier side is because that's where my elbow sits. This is a natural body position. It's comfortable and I'm working close to my body, pulling towards me. As soon as I come onto the right side, this is a natural. And I tend to, a problem that I had in the past is I'd drop my elbow, which in turn would drop my fingertips, and it would pull my shape down. Going back to the, the point I just made about elevation, if you want to maintain more weight internally, what you're going to do is you're going to pull down. So what I'd tend to do on this side is I'd always pull down, and have a heavier side. And then you mm -hmm. work to adjust them in body yeah. position and how you control. But I think you know the, the, the truth is most people don't even know where their weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. How do you start to become aware of, of what your weaknesses are? Did you have someone help you, a mentor? Yeah, I think uh, for me, something that I feel quite strongly about is uh, having consistent education, not just working as an educator, but like, being educated myself like relating back to our talking point a minute ago having the talking point of we're always going to have someone that's going to teach you something new you know so yeah just constant education what's, is the key. what's your background James how did you become a hairdresser and how did you end up coming from London all the way to San Diego oh uh, where do we start we want to get to know you a little. <laughs> so I started my career at the Vidal Sassoon Academy. I did their diploma course. Um, in London? Yeah. Baby's Muse? Yes. 
The good old barn. You know it, Bond Street. Yeah, I've spent plenty of time there myself. So I started there and I was, I was kind of lucky with the educators that um, I had for the seven months. I had Jay Mahmood, uh, Daniel McCaw, uh, Dove, um, and then when Jay left so soon, uh, he introduced me to Johnny and Pedro um, at Alalon in London. And I went and spent some time with them. Um, I did an apprenticeship there, became a stylist. Um, and I mean, their education system is flawless in my opinion. They've put so much time and effort crafting it to be as perfect as they can make it that you just constantly want to learn. Um, so I was with them for, for five years. Um, I met Ben and Rebecca when they were over watching an Alalon in San Diego. And I haven't left. <laughs> awesome. What kind of shears are you using? We have a question coming in from Audra Rodriguez. What type of scissors or shears are you using? And do you have any particular favorites? Uh, these are made by Alalon. Um, when I'm looking for scissors, the things that I'm looking for is how thick or thin the blade is. I like something quite like thin. Uh, and I'm also looking for the tips. I like sharp pointy tips, which when you'll see in a minute once they're blow dried, I like to do a lot of my refining and detail work just with the tips of my scissors. So yeah, the tips and the thickness of the blade. So again, if you, for all those that are just joining us, James started in the back and he was working some graduation and uh, catch us up onto where you are now in the haircut technically. So I'm on my last section now. I'm just pulling everything back over to the, over the top, just to my cutting line, making sure everything connects in. Um, this is actually the point where I'm gonna step away for a minute. Um, and I'm gonna start blow drying my shape whilst Ben comes in and then I'm gonna come back and refine. Let me just spin her around and take a look at it. Awesome. I hope you're enjoying it. Let's get James <laughs> on the camera for a minute here. Yeah. So again, we're gonna go in a bunch of parts. So you saw that uh, James just did this beautiful, kind of really seamless graduation. Super jealous of that, he did it so beautifully. Um, now he's gonna go off and blow dry and come back later and do some dry cutting work. But we're gonna to switch to Ben Crace, which is his uh, partner in crime here. These two guys look like Vikings. <laughs> I'm usually yeah. not the smallest guy in the room, but here I am. So I'm over here, Ben Crace. James oh, Mullen, here we are in San Diego. Look, I get to be like, I, get to be, I feel petite. Look at this. I got my own like Viking crew. Um, so you're gonna go up here. We're gonna switch right here. So now we've got Ben and Ben. Um, this is Ben's model, Sonny. Have a seat. Ben's got something really creative planned for us. Let's get a look at what you've done so far. You're really pushing the envelope here. Can you explain to us what what uh, what your inspiration was and what you what you've created so far? Yeah, of course. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, what we've done so far, first we started with the color. I wanted to work with a couple rectangular shapes. As you can see, there's one here. It's just uh, basically a black rectangle. That's where I started uh, my initial haircut. I sectioned that out and I scissor over combed that. And then I took basically a section from where the rectangle stopped straight down behind the ear vertically. Then I cut a line just above the ear. And then I cut another line just below the ear, one in front of the ear and one behind the ear. Then I blow dried it and then I refined my, sh my shape with uh, scissor over comb. Each zone I also worked scissor over comb to refine. And then if you look through the front here. So it's not, not, not your average uh, haircut, is no, it? No, not your average yeah. haircut. Yeah, so what, what do you get yeah. inspiration for something like this? And well. I mean, when we do hair, I like to push, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of relate it to fashion, right? When things go down the runway, it, it's not, the eye's not used to it. So that's why I want people to look at the hair and think, what the heck All is right. that, right? So, so where are you gonna start cutting now? Yeah. So I gotta, uh, I'm gonna start in the back. Um, so basically, 
I pre-cut just to uh, in uh, uh, for time's sake, like James was saying. I started in the back with vertical sections, um, and then I basically pivoted all the way to the uh, back of the ear on this side, and I'm just going to work through on this side. So I'm using vertical sections. My vertical shape is uh, round into square. So if you want to stand here, Kevin. Sure. So you talk about those geometric things like round and square. What does that mean to you? So what, what, well, well, what makes this square or round? Well, basically, if you think of those are all the fundamental shapes that create everything, right? So it's how we communicate to each other. So we can start kind of a language of haircutting. We yeah? can start a language where, you know, I, I did a shape. Sorry, my hands are shaking, everyone. I don't be nervous. Everybody loves you. You got all your supporters here. Aaron Johnson saying, dude, you're insane. Nicholas Sansone. I mean, there's Estelle Glendon. You got all Patty Gibbons is here. Everybody loves and respects your work. And oh, you know, for man. us at Hairbrain, it was a few years ago where we saw this dude in San Diego posting this really strong work that had a really unique perspective. And so we really looked into it. And we saw, who is this gummy beads? And, and what are these videos? And it's coming out of this hip, hip kind of um, looking space in San Diego, and we wanted to get to know you, so it's a real honor for us to be here with you, so we're oh, all man. big supporters. Completely, completely think that you guys are amazing, and it's an absolute honor just to be with you guys. Um, the Hairbrain community also, it inspires me more than anything, because I can look at people's work throughout the world, it makes me push what I'm doing more. Right on. A lot of you guys have gotten to know each other, yeah? You've actually <laughs> been over to London to do training and that's Yes, awesome. yes, yes. I went to uh, uh, Ali Long for training in London. That's where I met James. And you guys built a good friendship and now you live friendship. here and works with you. Yes, yes. Awesome. Um, a good tip when I'm working through the top here on the top of my fingers, uh, I want to pull everything straight out from the base. As I go down the head, I'm just going to simply tilt her head which allows me to simply elevate straight off the base. So obviously, you know, continue. using her head position helps you a lot, especially yeah. if you're a bigger dude. If I find myself like this, I'm just gonna move her head. Yeah. So that's a big thing with body position, I think. So you can keep your perspective by moving her head around. I yes, think a lot of exactly. hairdressers are still afraid to move the client around. I think there's some old school cosmetology about, you know, not moving the client. Yes. Don't stand here, don't do this. Uh, where I think, you know, obviously if you're going to get a better shape and you can gently move someone's head into position, it'll really help. It's much better. For instance, right now, so I'll tilt her head and then it allows me to stand a little bit straighter. And in this area, you guys, I'm very aware of my tension. Frank Mussolino is giving us grief because it's a Saturday night. You're still here though, right, Frank? <laughs> you know, it's Labor Day weekend, so we've got, everyone's got barbecues planned, so we figured we'd change it up. <laughs> Saturday night, Frank Saturday. is one of our uh, one of our members from the East Coast. Always a big supporter. He says, "What's up? What's, What's up, up Frank? Frank?" All right, let's so get so, us back into this technique here. Being mindful of my grooming, so I'm to make sure everything's groomed really clean. It helps me with my balance, keep things in order. So you mean literally the way you're combing and pushing the hair? You're yeah. putting that grooming. So the actual workspace, you want it really organized. Yeah, I'm using the fine side of the comb right now which is gonna give me a little bit more tension. A good general rule for sectioning is to section with the wide end and comb through with the fine end, which allows you to really plaster that hair to the head, keeps everything nice and clean. Gets a nice rhythm too, so yeah, you have to nice be able rhythm. to rotate that comb really well. Yeah, exactly. Of the dexterity in the fingers. So essentially now you're kind of layering this down and you're, so, are you following the head shape into the nape a little tighter? Uh, no, I'm actually, vertically, it's going round into a little bit square. Okay, so you're keeping There's more There's a reason. Weight. There's right. a reason, yeah. Let's hear it. So Why the are you reason, keeping it? The reason I'm working internally first versus externally is because I want more control of my internal shape, which then allows me to go ahead and dictate my external shape, which is going to be about right there. Vice awesome. versa, your external shape can dictate your internal shape. Whatever you want more control over is a good place to start, yeah? So we have a couple questions about like your shorter area, Ben. Um, do you ever yeah. use clippers or did you do that all with scissors? Uh, and that was coming from Audra Rodriguez. Um, I only use scissors. I've never used clippers in my life, so I feel more comfortable. I used clippers when I was about 15 in the back of the, uh, you know, in the bathroom. 
shaving my own head, but that's that's the only time I've used clippers. Now, I think a lot of people out there aren't aware um, that there's kind of a certain philosophy in hair cutting that's focused purely on scissors. Like scissors, I'd imagine yeah. you don't even use thinning scissors or razor very much. Yeah, I use scissors in a comb. Just scissors in a comb. It's a certain philosophy. It's taking a way of hair cutting to another level. Yeah. So that's what these guys practice. They work with small, sharp, pointy scissors. They try to cut just shapes in, very linear, strong lines. They don't use texturizing scissors or clippers. And it's just kind of part of their religion of hairdressing, so yeah. to speak. It's what they believe in. And if we need to go through and, and soften areas, we can with point cutting or slicing using more freehand techniques. And then you get people like me who are blasphemers and will use anything. No, but Sometimes I, I break a bottle and I just go to town. Yeah, we have nothing against that at all. You know, we just choose to... I mean, I love every tool, right? Not, nothing against any tool at all. It's really how you use it, isn't it? Yeah, there's... The, the saying is, there, any tool is dangerous in the wrong hands, so... <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> as long as you understand what you're using and and practice, right? So try to understand the uh, the fundamentals of hair cutting in our mind first and then through practice we transfer to our hands, yeah? You know, if someone was out there and they, they felt like maybe they didn't know the fundamentals of hair cutting very well, yes. you know, what, what would your advice to them be to learn and, and get better with the fundamentals? Um, I would highly, highly suggest taking a class with uh, there's so many good companies out there, but what every are some of your favorites. Well, obviously, uh, I started uh, DJ Muldoon here in San Diego, who I think has created such a uh, amazing culture of, of hair cutters. He's exposed so many people to hair cutting. Uh, I love Ali Long in uh, London, where I went and trained. Um, obviously, Sassoon. Have you yourself done any Sassoon training? I've never done Sassoon training, but every teacher I've ever had has been from yeah. Sassoon. So in one way or another, it's, it's all coming it's all from the coming. same well. Yeah, exactly. It's all coming from the same well. All right, so catch us up on the haircut. What's happening now? Technically. So I think I have one more section left, and then I'm going to go through and uh, start my external shape, basically the outline. So the magic through the back isn't going to happen until I cut that line there. Right now, it may look a little you know, not as cool as it will look once we put that line in. Yeah, so, but it's kind of a smart choice to leave the line, you know, until after you build the shape, because then you can see how the hair is reacting and how it's shaping to the neck. Yeah. I think all too often people think strong haircut, put the line put in the first. Put the line in first, yeah. But sometimes that can be limiting. You yes, don't get as much yes. contour yes. and refinement. All right, so again, so, guys, looking for your questions. We're trying to keep up with them here on our... Uh, on our, on our Facebook connection. So if you have technical questions, please share them. We'd love to hear them all. So sometimes when, when people put their line in, I think they're afraid to maybe take it up too high. And you won't have any, like if I were to put my line in right here, you can see there's no strength to support it, yeah? So I know I need to take my line up to at least that high. And then also I'll look at her profile and I want to, I really want to accentuate her features, her cheekbone, her lips, her eyes. All those things are the details that, that make, I think, a cut more, you know, elevated. Got some great comments coming in from an old friend, Sasha Gast. Hey, Sasha. Sasha says, up until now, Gerard was my favorite teacher at Sassoon, but now I'd love to take a class with Ben and James. Oh, man. <laughs> He's someone I, I know from the 90s when I used to teach uh, the academy at Sassoon. Great guy, always always speaks the truth. So, and uh, Randy Taylor, the co-founder of Hairbrained, he uh, he came off a road trip and he was feeling a little sick, so he couldn't drive down for this. But he says he, he's sorry that he's missing it. Oh man, he's watching from home. Tell Randy hello, please. I wish I could. Uh, I met Randy for the first time in Vegas. It was such a pleasure to finally meet him. Yeah, so, he'll be he'll be around. He just he just drove across country <laughs> and he has. He's under the weather. So oh, I was no. like, you want to drive down to San Diego? He's like, no more driving. No All more. right, we're getting exciting here. So what's happening with the baseline? So I'm using no tension. I'm combing the hair from the roots. Biggest tip I could give when you're cutting a line is to focus on the roots and not on the line. Right. Because too many, people comb, too, too many people comb the hair down and look at the line and try to move the hair where they want it instead of where it naturally lives. Right. So if we focus on the root and let gravity do its job, 
That's a great tip. Result, yeah. It's you know, hair cutting is uh, ninety percent combing, isn't it? Yeah, seriously. The rest is just catching it and cutting it off. So no tension. So Hope then, since down. you don't use clippers, how are you going to remove that bottom? Oh, yeah, we we'll go. go through and oh, just oh, uh, okay. it's getting there now. So you're working with the scissor now. You guys have, are doing this a lot, and you've done it on a lot of videos. So can you explain technically what you're doing? Yeah. I think a lot of hairdressers are still a little scared of that. This is a good place to start, actually, for using uh, for skin fading or uh, just basically taking away the comb. Um, I'm using my my hand to put some extra uh, pressure, so the skin's a little bit more taut. And then the steel blade just rests on the skin. Mike Mussolini so, smoking a cigar on the deck, <laughs> watching you. Jesse Gain says hi. Oh, what's up, Jesse? Great work, guys. Man, Jesse's the man. I met him for the first time in Vegas. So, so another question about if it was um, shears or clippers. These guys are working exclusively with scissors as part of their philosophy. None of it was done with clippers. Yeah, no clippers. Honestly, it just takes practice. Uh, and again, what brand of scissors do you like to use? I, uh, I think I know those ones. These are Matsusakis. These are my favorite. And I guess they don't make these anymore. Uh, they, it's called an, an EVS. You can get different versions of them. You oh, you know. can, okay. It's not quite the same depending on the year you got them, but the Matsuzaki EV series, the pretty good, or the Slimline series. Slim All right, so back to this. You're cleaning up the neck. So I notice you're stretching the skin and using the blade. Can against, you explain it? Against the grain. So my hair goes this way here, yeah? So I need to kind of go against the grain up through here. And then sometimes over here I'll come this way. Yep, so you go opposite to the direction the hair grows, you stretch the skin, and then you're basically using the two blades like a clipper. Yeah, exactly. Because when they move across the skin, yeah. they remove anything that's cut between them. Yeah. I'll say one, one thing about this method that I really like is if you do have a client who has challenges with ingrown hair, um, and you're using, let's say, a, a trimmer or a clipper, that tends to create a little bit more ingrown hairs, where I've found being able to do this when I have a client who has ingrown hair problems, I do this, they always come back and say I didn't have any ingrown hairs. Ingr and now you got a client that's for a life. Really, that's, a, that's a huge thing. Client for life. Swing yeah. around on the side one second. So okay. definitely great technique to learn. So, Stretch the skin, go opposite. I think this is a, uh, you know, a, great a good way, way to, to practice. practice. Is, yeah. is even on your own arm. Using your arm, yeah. yeah. We do that all, just put the blade on the arm, go. You know, when you're sitting at home watching TV. Yeah, you can learn, and then you can <laughs> see what it feels like and learn yeah. the sensitivity of it. James' tip uh, he's told me before is to uh, uh, use a balloon, blow it up, put Sharpie on it, and then take the Sharpie off with your scissors. Nice. So that's a little more risky. Well, it's not risky because it's on a balloon, but. So Frank Mussolino likes to soon type cuts second. are making a big comeback. Do you feel the same way? Well, I think Sassoon is classic, so I think classic is always in. It's like a little black dress that never goes out of style, you know? Um, yeah, it's really just about I think, great haircutting. I think when people say the Sassoon yeah. way, they think of one thing, but really, yeah. if you look at the whole kind of um, variety of things you can do when you can control hair, you can do anything. Soft, strong, short, long. Anything. Absolutely. If something's done with thought and detail, and it took your time, I think it can always look beautiful, you know what I mean? So that's what we, you know, the focus. There's a little uh, color here just at the root, which is, I think, a nice little little shadow effect. So, so again, trying to keep up with the question, so always a little bit of a challenge depending on the connection. So um, a couple of questions about the type of comb that you're using. Yeah, this is the Sessi Bond. I love this comb. It's, uh, it's got the little grooves through the top that helps with uh, grip, Grip, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's a classic Japanese comb. It's still one classic. of my favorites. I just looked in the mirror, you guys. Yeah. So when you're checking your shape, mirror is huge. Because I can see that line through the back. Step away, make sure I visually check my shape. I can't tell you how big the mirror is. The mirror is everything. I didn't want that to be a point or anything, so I want to keep with the kind of the rectangular straight lines. Yeah. 
And talk about mirrors, look at these ones. They're here in the Hyde Edwards yeah. Salon, they have this beautiful, it's gotta be about seven feet. It's about the it's about yeah. same height as you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, the owner's a, a welder. Yeah. So he made these. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's very, very cool. So I'll tilt the head sometimes. Um, a good rule for when you want to move the head. Normally I'll cut my shape first with the head in the upright position. If I want to refine, I'll make sure I'm standing directly behind, or when I'm standing above behind them, I push the head straight away from my chest, and I'll go ahead and work in that zone. Right, right in the neck, in the neck here, there's the trapezius muscle. So hair is still falling naturally there. Then if I move on to this zone, I'll step here, head back upright, and then I'll push away from my chest. And then I can work through this zone. And then through the front, same thing. But I just want to make sure chin doesn't drop, because then that's going to be over-directing the hair. I think that's a good tip as well when you're refining a line. So we've got people tuning in from all over, which is great, uh, from as far away as Serbia, uh, oh, from people from Houston, people from everywhere, you know, just kind of sharing that love for craft hairdressing. Sorry I don't have the accent, you guys. I know James got the cool accent, so. You got a pretty cool accent. <laughs> wait, wait, now, wait, how did you start in hairdressing? We got James's story so, a little bit. How, what's your story? So I grew up in Montana, and I used to cut everybody's hair on the basketball team. Oh, you're a basketball player. Um, basketball huh? player, I yeah. still play. Right on. We just won the league championship, by the way. First, yeah, first, uh, shout out. What's, what's first, the team? Uh, we're called the Sea Hoons. Nice. It was the first win we've had in uh, eight years of playing. <laughs> hey, persistence pays <laughs> off. Just like becoming a great just trying to find the right angle here. Yeah. So I have a couple sections left through the top here using vertical sections. There's my, my guide. And I'm basically stopping where her color starts to the front. So there's like some uh, darker, is it like a blue or a black at the root there? Uh, we have a little black. Now did you color as well? I do. Oh uh, wow. Yeah. Me and my assistant Kelly did this color together. Right on. So, I mean, I'm not the greatest of, uh, not the best colorist in the world, but do I do color. Do you think you can be great at both? Or do you think that yeah. you kind of always, you think, yeah? I think you can be be great at anything you want to be great at. Nice. You know what I mean? Um, what this allows it to do, if this is a little bit shorter behind that uh, color there, it lets that, lets that, you can see that a little bit. If this was too long, it would sit over that and hide that. Yeah, again, lots of love coming in from all, you know, everybody out there. Nicholas Sansone says you're the man. Oh, uh, you're the man. Yeah. I can't wait to meet him. He's such you guys gonna you have something I've, planned? I've never met him, but we're gonna get you all I together. Just, we're gonna have a big yes. hairbrain convention. I just think he has such good energy, man. Just so Absolutely. hey Nicholas. I he can't wait to and, meet you, man. Yeah, and uh, we've met him in person many times, and I mean, that's what this is all about, you know? Yeah. Just getting people to share what they love, and uh, that's why we want to get down here to San Diego, because you guys are so passionate about what you do. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, the content that you put out. You're, you've been a Hairbrain Video Award uh, nominee, and you put out lots of great stuff uh, on a regular basis. So what's your process? How do you find models, especially for the creative work that you do? Yeah, so yeah. models are huge. Um, I think the best thing to do is to uh, hit the streets and get used to asking people if they want their hair cut. Right on. What's your model's name? I what's think your name? This is Sunny. Sunny? How did you find Sunny? Sunny's a hairstylist. Well, there you go. That makes it even better. Which is, you know, way better because it's probably going to be easier for her to wear this type of haircut. Uh, my good friend Clinton, who we cut hair with sometimes, uh, got Sunny as a model for me. Word um, up. But yeah, I think, uh, and then build your basically build your clientele of models just like you would um, with anything else. So do you have kind of like a, you know, a stable of models? Yes, I mean, I'm trying to build a, a stable of models, yes. Yeah, like your muses, and then you can kind of plan looks for them. And, yes. Yeah. So I'm going through just cross-checking my shape. I know my horizontal shape was round. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? I think, you know, not, not everyone is familiar with the three-dimensional concept of cutting. Yeah. So you're talking about a horizontal shape and a vertical shape. So, so explain, explain that a little bit to us. Whenever we cut hair, we're in control of two shapes. A vertical shape, which we can see from our profile, yeah, or from straight on. And it's going to be square, round, triangular, or a combination. And then we also have a horizontal shape, which I can only see from above, bird's eye view. So if we can understand what's controlling which shape and why, 
that's going to help us create better shapes, yeah? So, for instance, if I, I started with vertical sections, my, vertical, my cutting line was controlling my vertical shape, my horizontal shape was controlled by my over direction. So there's a lot of theory behind what you do. You're not yeah. just uh, intuitive and just cutting away stuff you don't like. You're more like an architect with hair. Yeah, I think it takes the guesswork away. Yeah. Um, and then you don't have fear, right? You're ready to, uh, you, you're gonna know what's happened. And you're gonna know what's gonna happen before you, before you start. So it's all about control. So a lot of the shapes that you do, I, I think you, know, you have to be a pretty brave hairdresser to attempt. Did you start off that way? I mean, were you always kind of brave, like pushing the envelope and putting lines into people's hair and things like that? Or is it something that happened over time? My eye was always attracted to that, but I had yeah. to develop the hands, you know? Yeah. So, like I said, at first it starts with the fundamentals, understanding um, the why behind everything, and then you just put it in your hands through practice. And like you were saying with James, have someone watch you like a coach. Yeah. Yeah, it's like an athlete. Yeah. I used to play golf. If someone doesn't watch a golf swing, you're just going to yep. you know, find Absolutely. someone you trust. And sometimes it's the littlest adjustment that changes everything, just yeah. like hand and body position. Yeah. You know, as a teacher for so long, people always say, my right side of my graduation always flips out. And yeah. you exactly know why. And it's like, because you're not bringing it around, you're not finding that landmark yeah. and landing the graduation. So you're actually yeah. collapsing that side, making it flip out. But yes. sometimes yes. you need a coach for that. Who, who's, like, uh, who's, so you mentioned DJ Muldoon earlier. Who are some other people who've been great coaches for you? Um, Huge, huge, huge influence is a guy named Matt Harrison. Who, right on. Uh, I know Matt from when he was you know, a college talent yeah. student too. Yeah. Matt's one of my biggest yeah. mentors in He's the world. He's a great guy. He's amazing. Yeah. And his wife, Adriana. We're all connected. Um, yeah. You know? And all craft hairdressers are connected. Yeah. It's a very thin line that we're all connected by. Yeah. Just want to, you know, we all just hope, you know, just genuinely share what we're doing. So it looks like you have a little bit of a dark, that, that's really cool. Was that planned? Can you see that Where's on camera? That? There's a little bit of a dark edge there. That just happened. Ah, come on. You should have said I, I wish, planned that. Yeah, I take, wish I did. Come on, take credit. I that, wish I did. That's killing it right there. It that little cool line. The line, right? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes so, being a sloppy uh, colorist. It can helps. Get, yeah, yeah. Can help. yeah. Yeah. Don't judge the color, please. Yeah. Please. No, the color's great. Yes. yes. So I finished my shape. Um, so now I'm going to start. Uh, refining a little bit. As you can see, I've, I've put in a line through the above the ear. Um, when you're working above the ear, obviously the skin is a little loose there, so you can put some tension on it and then go ahead and work on the skin a little bit easier. So I'm just looking through for some questions here. Sorry guys if we're not getting to all your questions. The connection always, uh, you know, lags a little bit. But please keep putting them up there and we'll do our best to get to them. And then her hair is starting to dry, you guys, so I need to make sure it's groomed. As I'm working, it's going to start to dry, so that's a good tip as well. Make sure the hair is groomed. The, the hair that you're not working on is groomed just as much as the hair you are working on. So you're pushing it into shape all the time, all the time, thinking about, you know, you're not just, you don't no. ignore anything. No. I mean, I think everything's in the details, you know? So anything we can do that to give us better results. Trying to find a good angle here. I like this little area here. I think you can kind of play with that once it's dry. Yeah, a lot, actually, a lot of people are loving Maybe. the color. Vanessa Anderson, the color and the cut are both amazing. You're amazing. Oh, man. Frank thinks the color is awesome. So, yeah, I guess you can be good at cut and color. <laughs> I've always said, it's you know, probably my assistant, Kelly. She probably she gets all the props. She gets all the yeah. Right on. <laughs> So what, what's your regular week like? Um, you know, I mean, obviously you're, you're doing clients uh, on a regular basis. So what, what's a week like look for you? Um, I work Tuesday through Saturday, basically um, eight to nine hours a day. I do uh, both cut and color. So depending on the day, we'll determine how many clients I have. I work behind the chair mainly, and I also teach with James as well. Um, Awesome. We got so, uh, Nick says he's skipping the bar for this. I guess Saturday oh, night man. would be the typical, uh, you know. But you can grab a, a, a beer or margarita right now, Nick, and yeah. uh, and join in. T tell him thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> we got other people laughing about their watching uh, football, <laughs> USC three Alabama zero, watching football and this at the same time. So her fringe kind of comes to a point. 
It's very subtle, but it comes to a slight point. Again with the fringe, just making sure natural fall. And then I'll go ahead and refine this when it's when it's dry. I put in these these little curved shapes in front, which is also a good tip uh, when you're working shorter shapes. It just really accentuates the cheekbones. And so some people just joined in and they want to just you know hear about where where we are right now. Okay. Um, Jeremy Hickson, he's a always watches us. Hey, what's up, Jeremy? Hey, Jeremy. We're in, where are we? Tell us, um, tell us, Ben. So we're at Hyde Edwards Salon and Spa in San Diego. It's in Little Italy. Are you talking about where we're at yeah, physically exactly. or the haircut? Yep, where we're at physically. Okay, physically. So we're in San Diego, California, uh, right in the heart of Little Italy. The salon, it's an old macaroni factory. It's a pretty cool space. It's got uh, all the natural uh, wood, brick, and uh, it's been open, we've been open for 10 years. I've been here ever since day one. So you've been working here for 10 years? 10 years, yeah. Awesome, man. 10 years. That's so, loyalty. You don't hear that too much. Yeah. Just, you know, people tend to jump around a lot. I've got a good, I have a good owner, so she yeah. treats me. And we're gonna get a chance to meet Rebecca in a minute. <laughs> yes. The owner here at Hyde Edwards, she's done a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of strong fashion styling for us. She's gonna show us that. And then we'll get both these guys together when they wrap up. A good tip also is use the points of the scissors, just slightly chipping. So it's going to allow me to not push the hair as much. So you're kind of keeping it almost perpendicular to the hairline, so you kind yeah. of, rather than... Just a slightly diagonal. Yeah. Just, it's really good for detailing. And Aaron's I think... saying, look so good, bro. Oh man, tell him thank you. Give you a couple of he's been fist doing, bumps. He's been doing so many killer haircuts, man. Tell him. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for... Uh, Again, I think it's incredible how you guys are all connecting. You guys have done some events together. You worked with Aaron and Emily yes. and Stello. I haven't met Emily, and oh, I can't yeah, wait to meet Emily because right she's killing it. Well, but, we'll definitely uh, have to get you guys all together for some events. I would love to. But, uh, yeah, we have lucky enough to go to Vegas with Aaron for the, with the collective for the uh, IBS uh, Vegas show. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to do some more together. Again, lots of people love the color. Can you tell us what color line you used and a little yeah. bit about the, the formula, if yeah. you can remember? Sunny came in and she had uh, she had uh, pre-lightened hair with some old, like, kind of uh, purplish through the ends. So we uh, lightened her roots with lightener, uh, L'Oreal, and uh, we pulled some through to kind of um, get a little bit of that pink out of her hair. And then we used a Reset Richesse 911 for the silver. And then the black um, two sections are Richesse as well. Uh, That's a tough one to say if you're yeah. not French, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they don't use that in Montana. Don't no, we can barely, you know. I, we kind of have that accent where it's like almost uh, Minnesotan, you know, don't you know? You know. <laughs> a lot of you know us. How long do you book out in the salon with a client? I book an hour. Uh, I do have an assistant, so it helps um, sometimes when uh, if I need to blow dry, um, and uh, or if, if she she can blow dry for me, she can. Uh, I'm gonna yes, Nicholas. There is a little Italy here in San Diego. Yeah, little Italy, San yeah. Diego. Yeah, and this is an old macaroni factory. Pretty so cool, right? These two zones are disconnected, so I'm going to go through and just slightly point cut. So you use the term zone a lot. Can you explain what you mean by that? So zones are just different areas that we've basically where two guides don't meet, right? Disconnection. So we are, uh, I think zone is a good word to use. Um, so you can go beyond the basics of everything blending. So instead of this just being a short layer, You've got different components in it that don't necessarily have to connect. Yeah. Just visually have to look good. It helps you describe what you're doing in a clear, more clear, understandable way and a more professional way as well. So a couple more questions for you uh, from Frank Mussolino. He wants to know how much you charge for a haircut. Um, I charge $100. That's a great price. I think you're definitely uh, a $100 haircutter. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I, I, I really... Um, um, you know, I try not to sacrifice quality for time. Um, if I'm running a little late, um, most of my clients know that I'm going to spend the time on them. So I that, think... Uh, 
quality over quantity is, is always been my motto. I think it's a really interesting conversation as someone, you know, who's pretty, I think I've been in all 50 states in several salons in every single state. And I truly believe that every state in this country, you can charge a hundred dollars for a haircut. Yeah. Um, you just have to find the right salon and the right people. Yeah. And I think it's, it's putting it into perspective. I know that every client that sits in my chair has spent a hundred dollars at least once on a pair of shoes yeah right you know and i, I don't think you have to be a millionaire to buy a hundred dollar pair of shoes no you just have to think you know there's something special or valuable about them and if we as as craft hairdressers can get people to appreciate their hair as much as they do their shoes yeah. then we can all charge a hundred dollars exactly there's no reason if it has value it's, absolutely i mean you know just make sure like you say we 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 have uh, spent the time to, to, to learn our craft, right? All right, so as you, uh, any final, uh, you're gonna, we're gonna give you a few more minutes to refine while we take a look at Rebecca's model yeah, and then yeah. bring James back on. Any final words for the viewers? Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. I genuinely, genuinely really appreciate it. I hope we, uh, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Yeah, and we'll get it. We'll get a closer look at this. He's gonna keep working on it. We're gonna have Rebecca come on in with her model. Oh, what's this gorgeous model's name here? This is Lucy. Oh, this is Scruffy. No, Lucy. Lucy's super cute. Oh, this is your model. Sorry. Come on in here. Oh, this is fun. Can you give us a little? Uh, so first off, guys, uh, yeah. this is Rebecca. I'm sorry, Rebecca. What's your last name? Uh, Hyde Edwards. There you go, Rebecca Hyde Edwards. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we're here at Hyde Edwards Salon. Rebecca is the the owner here of this yeah. beautiful salon, yeah. and she's allowed us to come in here and work with these guys and use the space. So big love for Rebecca. Tell us a little bit about this um, creation here. Um, well, Ben and James asked me if I'd like to do a bit of a style. So um, what I did was is crimped her hair, tiny little sections, and then um, took an old school hairnet and capped it on top while she held it and I weaved, if you put your head down. Yeah, that's and cool. And I literally weaved using her hair, no other sort of ways of keeping it in, just used her hair to weave in and out of the net. And, and no pins back at and all? Forth, no. Just her hair through the net, pulling the net in tighter yeah. and tighter? So the only place where there is pins is just on the sides. Just to hold the net in? Yeah. yeah. But all of this, so if you feel it, yeah. feels I like a pin like, cushion. like braids or stitching, yeah, it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it's literally her hair, that's it. Just used a, uh, what do you call it? Like a crochet hook? Yeah, with an eye in it. Yeah, yeah. cool. And then these are, um, uh, porcupine? Quills. Yeah, porcupine. They're yeah. real porcupine quills. Yeah, real ones. Cool. And you just kind of visually place them through there. Yeah. 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 So do you do a lot of dressing work? Do you do... Um... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely more my thing to do yeah. that than what these lads do over yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, That just shows great yeah, diversity even here within your salon. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the salon. These guys are telling you, over 60 people work here? Uh, yeah, there's 59 of us. That's, exact, that's pretty yeah. impressive. And how's business? It's good because we're, we're both, um, we're hybrid. So we are booth and commission, which is... Interesting. How long have yeah. you been, been able to do both? Uh, 10 years now. 10 years. That's yeah. impressive. We'd love to, you know, it's it's such a challenge in our industry to make a successful salon. So to hear that Rebecca's been able to do that with that hybrid um, kind of model, I think is incredible. And I, I think maybe in the future episodes when we do some business interviews, we'd love to hear yeah. about it because so many people out there are struggling. They try commission, it doesn't work. They go to rental, they lose control of their salon. But maybe a combination of the two works great. It's worked for you for 10 years, yeah? Well, awesome. All right, thanks, okay, Rebecca. Cool, thanks. thanks for hosting us. We're going to get back to James here, the other Viking here. <laughs> this is like the one time in the world where I have two dudes way bigger than me. So I'm feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit insecure. But take it away. Okay, so I'm just going to recap a little bit. So I've blow dried now. Um, I blow dried it smooth, but when I put in my outlines, uh, I'm going to start to kind of texturize it and use some texture spray just to kind of make it a little bit messier. So for those who are just joining us and maybe missed your wet work, can you explain yes. how you did this beautiful graduation in the back? Yeah, so I had five zones in my haircut. Zone one was the fringe. Uh, from the center part into the highest point of the recession, we just did a little round layer and we popped in a kind of textured fringe, which you can't really see. Uh, there we go, it's under there. We got two zones running just in front of the ear. These zones were concave layered. 
dropped out the outline nice and soft and then internally some shorter layers. Zone 4 was the graduation in the back which I've just been cutting. I used a pivoting section starting vertical but very very quickly getting to the horizontal so that my elevation was in control of this shape. And then I've got a little secret zone over here which I'm not sure if Ben's spoken about. When we were kind of planning our haircuts we wanted to do opposites. So his is quite strong, mine's the more softer shape. I've gone with a darker base with a kind of lighter rectangular panel in there and you've just been watching Ben's. Ben's was the the lighter base with the darker rectangular panel. So I popped in one of my outlines. I'm just going to come through with my second side and then I'm going to start to dress it. Can we see? Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm just making sure all the hairs come down to the natural full. And I'm just going to use the tips of my scissors to very, very, very gently chip away at the outline. So in my mind, I'm always working towards a focal point with my outlines. On this side, what you can see is, if we lift Ali's head up slightly, the outline in the back, I use the corner of the eye, sorry. Your main <laughs> You don't have your standard man bun in today. I know, we did that last weekend, so we were like, let's do a hair down week. Um, outline in the back goes to the corner so of the really eye. you plan out your haircuts, you plan out your hairstyles. Oh, yeah. last yeah. week. You're like a boy band. We had matching outfits last week. Nice. We did white shirts, black trousers, yeah. and hair up. I saw that, I think I posted a picture. Yeah. yeah you guys, you're kind of like a boy band. And then this week we were going to do white t-shirts, uh, hair down. We both did white shoes, but um, yeah, my white t-shirts were in the wash, so mine's slightly pink. Mm -hmm. Alright, so again, it, it, you've kind of taken the, the hairline, created the line that you wanted, and now you're working right on the skin with your scissor. Can you explain that a bit? Yes, uh, I'm going to start to remove a little bit of hair here. I'll just throw in a second little line. I'm just going to use the tips of my scissors to remove any excess neck hair. I think the key when you're trying this technique is to just avoid putting the tips of the scissors into the skin. That's the only way I feel like you're gonna cut someone if you pinch the skin. If you've got a slight angle between the tips of your blade and the skin, you've pretty much got full control over what you're chasing. And you can, so. If you've got a little hair on your wrist, you can practice that, can't you? Yeah, I mean, so. there's multiple ways you can practice. Like, like you said, the wrist, uh, now I, I've seen you do, and I think it's it's made quite an impact um, on online. You've done kind of whole fades with just the scissor. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is that something you do very often. Yeah, in the salon, probably like three or four a day. Um, at first, it takes a bit of time, um, but me and Ben have got it down to about 35, 40 minutes now for a men's scissor fade. Awesome. So, uh, you know, we have some general questions. One coming in from Alexandra Jacob. Um, she's new in the field and she's looking for advice on how to get her career started in the right direction. Yeah. What, what do you, you do a lot of teaching, so you must work a lot with young, young hairdressers. Yeah, I what's, mean, what's the message that you give to them? Almost relating back to my point before, just chase education. Find some people you like, find a style of work that you like, wherever it's a kind of styling, softer kind of, approach or like harder lines find some hairdressers and just ask them questions send them pictures of your work kind of get them to critique it ask what what they would do differently so what? finding mentors yeah, yeah exactly it's kind of you know it, it goes back to you know why we call it craft hairdressing because it's based off of a craft and in uh -huh. a craft you know nobody just kind of picks up uh, a tool and becomes a master and it's the same with this you have to have mentors guide you and yeah. I think that that's always our constant message to people and it's great to hear you guys support it looking yeah. for great mentors is the key I think it like just loosely swaying off that subject you can't really teach taste taste something that kind yeah. of and why would you want to experience yeah. yeah but I mean find someone you like get them to critique your work tell them be honest tell me what you like what you don't like Give me the reasons why, and then just kind of go from there. So I've noticed you've been kind of, you, you seem to be in this um, 
in this realm where you're playing around with hairline, some of your uh, photos recently leaving yeah. some kind of like negative space there. Yeah. Is that kind of what's happening here? Yeah, my taste levels, I guess, at the moment, I like to play with some kind of softer, looser internal shapes with strong outlines. That's kind of where I'm going at the moment. Um, I know for Ali, she wears her hair a lot kind of looser. Sometimes she'll just kind of wet to dry, kind of let it dry. So I wanted to create a shape that would kind of work with that. I'm kind of coming towards the end now. Just gonna kind of start to style it, kind of finish off my look. So, you know, with creative work like this, the question that comes up a lot is how do you know when you're done? You know, it's one of those things where sometimes you go a little bit over and you lose the essence of it, or if you yeah. go a little bit under, it could have been better. How do you know when you're done? If things, you know, aren't all connected mm -hmm. and it's so much more visual and all these different zones, how do you judge that it's time to be done? Um, well, I never used to know when to be done, which <laughs> was my biggest lesson. I used to kind of be like, I want to put something here, I want to put something here. Um, I guess just keeping it simple, choose one creative aspect or focal point to a haircut, use that as your creative. So have, have a clear objective, and exactly. then when you kind of reach that objective, you know, you know you're done. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I always like to say, because I get that question a lot, I mean, I work in a very different way nowadays, but the way that I work can be so loose that it can be hard to know when you're done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, you know, if you start to kind of push it around and it looks better work with where it. it falls, you know you're done. Yeah. You know, like it, there's no other message there. It's like if you just kind of push it, like if the shape is great and you just go in like that and you're like, wow, that looks incredible, that's how you know when you're done, you know? So but, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> What are you using product-wise there? It smells lovely. Uh, this is from Shuamura. This is a Texture Wave spray. I don't actually use Shuamura, but Ben uses this all the time in the salon. And he loads it onto the hair, and it never gets heavy. Which is, I always find with products, I get like trigger happy, put too much in, and then it looks dirty and greasy. So I like this because you can just load the hair up with it. How long have you been? We have a question coming in from Sam Eichstadt. How long have you been in the industry to attain this type of quality? He wants to know how long you've been training and uh, how. Seven years now. That's a pretty short amount of time, so you're, yeah. you're definitely an outlier in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've just been lucky with the people that I've been surrounded by. Some of them obviously been in this room. Um, yeah. I hope you like it. <laughs> okay, and then uh, what's Ben doing? Where's Ben? You want to bring her over? Yeah. Let's get these girls together. You got anything on underneath here? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> Never fails. We're going we're gonna to get uh, everyone together here for a final. You want to say hello to the crowd? We've got some great people join us. Edna pulled up. Yeah. Hey, from All the, the San Diego craft hairdressers came in to support these guys. Yeah. We've got some, some uh, Harriet from England That's happens fun. to be here. Works at uh, Alalon with Pedro and Johnny. If you guys see it, say what's up. We'll get some Greek food next time I'm in town. All right, let's go back over to Ben and see this final <laughs> super creative work. Thank you, man. Yeah, so Sum I just, it up for us. Well, basically, uh, I blow dried. I put some product in. Uh, what did you use? This. I used uh, the relaxing fluid and Dobbinus from Dobbinus. And you, uh, do you use a lot of Dobbinus products? Yeah, I really love Dobbinus. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Um, We've always been big fans of Dobbinus. Yeah, they're just cool people, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, I used uh, oil oil as well for moisture. Cool. Uh, wrap dried, um, and then I went through and detailed my external shape. Just uh, went through, chipped, got away all these little. So when you put these lines in, you just literally put the scissor right in there and work your way through. There's no clipper work. No clipper work. Just all scissors. support it. Yeah. Yeah. A good tip: put your your pointer finger right where your screw or your on your scissor, and that'll let you just go ahead and have have more control. Just because it's yeah. an inevitable question, you know, we do these things and they're so yeah. mass. Yeah. People say, "How's that going to grow out?" Oh my God. Yeah. What, what do you think about when you do that? When you talk to, is it Sunny? Yeah. When, when you talk to Sunny and you want to yeah. do something like this. 
What do you say to her? Obviously, this we're not saying this is for everyone. It's creative work, yeah. but she's wearing it. So what, what do you tell her? Well, I think like when you're first consulting, a good question to ask on a level from one to ten. One being just a trim, ten being we can go bonkers on your hair. Where are you at? She was 11. She was 11. Yeah. Right? So I know, and I can tell. I look as soon as someone walks in, you assess how they look, how they dress, right. how they talk, posture, all those things. And she's a hairstylist. She's a makeup artist. She can Makes be all more the creative. Difference. So finding the right person. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then all the, almost the scenario flips. Like if you did something that was just pretty and basic on her, she wouldn't be happy. No. no. You know, so there is yeah. there's there's a, a match out there for everyone. So yeah. Ben's out there to be able yeah. to find people that want his kind of work. Yeah. But of course, on the regular basis, he. He does just as many long layers and bobs all day. Yeah, yes. Lobs all, lobs <laughs> lobs all day. Lobs all day. Lobs all day. Beachy right. waves. But there's got to be waves. people that push. You know what I mean? Got to push the envelope. There's got, and if it's I mean, it's kind of something you know? we have to we have to make sure it happens in our industry because it's so yeah. easy to slip into the mass and the consumer yeah. all the time, and then we lose our edge, and before you know it, we're just boring. Yeah. And that's what we're definitely not here tonight. James, you want to wrap it up here? One yeah. last, uh, yeah. One last recap. Super soft, kind of layered, graduated, uh, loose shape. A few zones. Zone one in the front, which is kind of soft, layered. Zone two in the sides, concave layered, just dropping out the outline, so she kept a bit of length in the front. In the back, we graduated it vertically. It was triangular. Following the head shape round, and then we got a fun little zone over here, which was just a little rectangle so that we could tie the two haircuts in. But when she wears it messy, she can hide it or reveal it and have it as a little focal point. Awesome. Labor of love this weekend, celebrating Labor Day down here in San Diego with James Mould and Ben Crace, these guys who I've wanted to get together with for a while. Now we're gonna go out and have a few beers and yeah. celebrate. <laughs> if, uh, just one last thing. There is a promo code called labor of love for hairbrain.pro. If you're looking for comb, scissors, brushes, use the labor of love as a promo code, save 15%. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Round of applause so from your apartments and wherever you are. Thank you.